in the first session we'll be understanding the basics uh, of induction motor and the constructional details of induction motors uh, we know that induction motors are ac machines the electromagnetic energy conversion between the source and the load utilizes ac power uh, secondly uh, we also understand that most of the use of induction machines is for motoring purposes and very rarely it is used as a generator the as induction generators uh, as induction as in generating mode induction machines are used in standalone power systems like in uh, wind turbine systems uh, or in solar power plants but most of the most of the in applications of induction machines are limited to motoring operations uh, almost 90 percent of the industrial loads utilize induction machines or rather induction motors uh, for uh, different applications as a result of this uh, the induction machines are also known as the horsepower of uh, industries So induction machines they are fairly simple uh, AC machines they are mostly used in motoring mode and very rarely used in generating operations and most of the industrial loads use induction motors uh, for their applications uh, and even in commercial application in residential applications like in water pumping or in fans we use induction motors uh, th this is the basics of induction motor we'll be now moving on induction machines uh, the basic principle of operation uh, the detailed principle of operation will be discussed in uh, later videos in this video we'll be just understanding the basic principle of operation uh, the induction machines work on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction simply states that uh, if a conductor is placed in a magnetic field and the conductor is rotating, EMF is induced in the conductor. Or in other words, we can also state that if a conductor is placed in a rotating magnetic field, and EMF is induced in the conductor. Here we can see that uh, ABCD is a conductor. Uh, this is the front view of the conductor. If this conductor is rotating in this magnetic field shown by North Pole and South Pole here, uh, and the magnetic fields of lines are drawn in this direction shown by B, if this conductor is rotating at certain velocity with respect to the magnetic field an emf will be induced in the conductor uh, simply given by v b l where uh, v is the induced emf in the conductor v is the relative velocity between the magnetic field and the conductor if the relative velocity between the magnetic field and the conductor is zero, in that case, EMF induced will be zero. B is simply the magnetic field and L denotes the length of the conductor. So as per electromagnetic induction principle, an EMF will be induced in the conductor when it's rotating in the magnetic field or in other words, if the magnetic field is itself rotating and the conductor is stationary, uh, EMF will be induced in the conductor given by the relationship E is equal to VBL. If both the conductor as well as the magnetic field are rotating at same speed and the relative velocity between them is zero, that will mean simply that EMF induced uh, at that time will be zero. So this is the basic principle of operation of uh, electromagnetic induction. Uh, 
the detailed principle of operation of how an induction motor works, uh, how the ener mechanical energy is available at the output of the induction motor will be discussed in a later video. Next in this session we will be understanding the construction of induction motor. Induction motors uh, are fairly simple in design. They are simpler in design and they have a rugged construction. It's because of these two properties, uh, their cost is also less and their efficiency is also pretty high. Uh, as a result of these features, industrial loads prefer to use induction motor. Uh, now the details, the detailed parts of induction motor include a stator and a rotor. These are the two principal components of any uh, rotating machine. Uh, principal components of any rotating machine involve a stator and a rotor. In case of induction motor, the stator will be carrying the field circuit. We will be explaining that in detail. And the rotor will be carrying the armature circuit. Fine. Stator simply refers to the stationary part of the machine. This part of the machine will not be rotating. While as the rotor part, it is rotating in, uh, it is a rotating part of the uh, AC machine. Now, how a stator looks in case of an induction motor. Uh, so, before we discuss stator in further details, this is this diagram here shows uh, the different components of an induction machine. We have a fan that is actually used for cooling purposes, cooling of the bindings. So, the, there is a fan cover associated with this. Uh, there will be the wiring box or the terminal box from where the terminals of the stator will be visible. Uh, the stator and the rotor will be supported by a cast iron frame. Uh, there will be the name plate for, rate, for mentioning the different ratings of the induction motor. We will be having the stator associated with that will be the stator coil. So this part actually denotes the stator of this induction machine. There will be the rotor. Now uh, further we will be discussing the different structures of rotors. So associated with rotor will be the bearings. Uh, so also uh, there will be in case of a different type of rotor there will be slip rings and brushes associated as well. With the induction motor. So these are different components of an induction motor. Now moving on to the stator. This diagram here shows us the cross sectional view, uh, the cut section view of an induction motor. Stator simply The stationary part, as I have already said to you, it is a slot. It consists of slots and teeth and sharp slots and teeth. So, within these slots and teeth, windings are arranged. Uh, so, different number of conductors will be placed in the slots and they will be connected with each other to uh, form the windings. Uh, so in case of a single phase induction motor, the slot, the stator will be carrying only a single phase winding. While as in case of a three phase induction motor, the slots or the stator will be carrying a three phase winding. So in principle, a uh, stator consists of a slot and teeth structure within which windings are arranged. So in this diagram, we can clearly see uh, the windings of the induction motor. These are the windings of the induction motor uh, that can be, we can see the thickness, we can see the uh, nature, we can see the 
material of winding that's used in case of induction motors uh, the starter windings will be uh, the starter windings in case of a motor will carry the voltage will be supplied with the voltage so that a magnetic field is produced in case it's an induction generator the starter will uh, the starter windings will be used to provide the field the field will have to be provided using the starter windings so this is about the starter uh, it's a simple slot and teeth structure within which windings are arranged in a single phase induction motor only a single set of single phase windings will be used in case of a three phase structure three sets of windings will be used as far as the rotor is concerned there are two types of rotors based upon which there are two types of rotor structures used in induction motors based upon which we have two different types of induction motors one is known as the wound round induction motor in this case uh, the induction the starter will the rotor will be known as the wound round rotor or the slip ring rotor and in other in second uh, rotor structure uh, we have a spiral cage structure for the rotor because of which the induction motor is classified as a spiral cage induction motor so in the first uh, case where we have a wound round induction motor the rotor looks similar to that of the starter of the induction motor so uh, principally uh, we know that a starter simply has slots and teeth within which windings are arranged and this structure does not rotate uh, the rotor in case of wound round induction motor will be similar to that of the starter that means it will also be carrying slots and teeth and uh, these slots and teeth will be carrying windings the rotor is rotating since the rotor structure is rotating so we need to provide some arrangement uh, so that the windings do not get twisted and we are able to carry forward the power uh, in whether it's a whether we are using it in motor mode or in a generating mode so for that reason we use slip rings so looking at this diagram here we can see that there are this is the rotor structure here so there are windings associated with the rotor uh, so this this is the rotor of the in, wound round induction motor so it also has slots and teeth these windings are the windings of the stator they will also be placed in uh, slots and teeth so the rotor windings are then connected by means of slip ring arrangement and by using brushes we can uh, use uh, we will be carrying forward the power these slip rings will also help us in shorting we can short the rotor winding uh, by means of these slip rings now why we why we need to short the rotor windings uh, that will be discussed when we further study the principle of operation uh, so right now we need to just understand the constructional details of the induction motor so in case of a wound round induction motor rotor is similar to that of the starter starter has slots and teeth and it carries windings in the wound round induction motor rotor also carries slots rotor also has slots and teeth and it will be carrying windings in a three phase induction motor the rotor will be carrying three phase windings similar to that of the starter now we can either connect these three phase windings in star or in delta uh, mostly uh, we prefer to use uh, the windings are mostly connected or preferably connected in star shape and by means of slip ring and brush arrangements we can make sure that the windings do not get twisted as the rotor is rotating and we are able to carry forward the current also these slip rings will help us in uh, we can also short the rotor windings by means of these slip rings 
further we can see since uh, the rotor is uh, rotor is simply uh, in case of a boundary induction motor there are rotor windings connected through a slip ring arrangement we can add additional rotor resistance by externally to this circuit through the slip ring arrangement fine in case of the boundary induction motor the rotor resistances or the rotor windings are accessible through the slip rings so by means of these slip rings we can add additional resistance to these rotor windings uh, the use of additional rotor resistance uh, can be primarily it is done for speed control there may be other reasons for doing this as well uh, so in case of uh, wound or induction motor additional rotor resistance can be connected through the slip rings to the rotor windings uh, for speed control so that's why the wound or induction motor is also known as the variable speed induction motor fine uh, the second rotor structure based upon which we obtain a spiral cage induction motor looks something like this so here we can see the design of a spiral cage induction motor uh, spiral cage induction motor instead of carrying rotor windings will simply be carrying conducting bars and these conducting bars uh, as, as similar to that in case of boundary induction motor these conducting bars will be supported by shorting rings at either ends so if we look at this diagram these are the conductor bars and there will be rings at either ends of these bars so that uh, the complete loop is obtained or the rotor circuit is shorted uh, we can see uh, this is a structure in which the bars are laminated on top similarly here if we remove these laminations we can see that the bars are placed uh, in this fashion in case of a spiral cage induction motor now why we call it a spiral cage induction motor because uh, the the running wheels that squirrels or hamsters use uh, for exercise purpose or what, what we can see what's also known as the squirrel cage it looks similar to that uh, the squirrels use for uh, or the hamsters use fine uh, noticeably here also we can see that conductors are not perpendicularly placed they are not perpendicular they are placed at some angles now uh, these conductors are placed at certain angles now this uh, placing of the conductor bars at angles is known as skewing this skewing is simply done so that magnetic locking uh, does not take place uh, the details of magnetic locking will be uh, understood after we understand the principle of operation of induction motor right now we need to understand that the bars are not perpendicularly placed uh, they are placed at certain angles to the uh, shorting rings this process is known as skewing uh, this actually helps us prevent the magnetic locking uh, similarly in case of wound round induction motor to prevent the magnetic locking uh, in what we do is we use uh, rotors have different number of slots uh, and teeth different number of slots and teeth uh, from that of the stator say we have not only different number of slots and teeth they should not also be integral numbers uh, they are also different integral wise say for example we have uh, 
two slots of starter we will be having we'll be using i will be having three slots of rotor or five slots of rotor we will not be using two or four or six slots of rotor uh, this will help us prevent the magnetic locking uh, between the starter and the rotor the principle of which will be understood after we understand the principle of operation uh, so these are the constructional details of induction motors we have seen the different parts of induction motors the principal parts actually involve the, are the starter and the rotor the starter is simply a structure which helps us provide the field circuit in case of induction motors and using these windings we can produce uh, end pole structure for the induction motor fine by using the starter windings uh, we can produce end pole structure for the induction motor uh, the second component of that of the the second principal component of an induction motor is the rotor we have two rotor structures with the wound round structure and the square cage structure based upon this we have uh, the wound round induction motor and the square cage induction motor in case of a wound round induction motor the rotor uh, structure is similar to that of the starter that is it has also slots and teeth it also carries rotor winding in case of a three phase structure the rotor will be carrying three phase windings in case of a single phase uh, induction motor the rotor will be carrying only single phase winding uh, but to prevent magnetic blocking what we do is we use different number of slots and teeth from that of the starter uh, they should be different uh, also integral wise the second rotor structure is the square cage structure uh, accordingly we have the square cage induction motor in a square cage induction motor uh, we use conducting bars we have bars of conductors instead of windings these bars uh, this bar structure is fashioned in such a way that it looks like the exercise wheel or the square cage uh, that the square or hamsters use uh, also to prevent the magnetic locking in case of the square cage induction motor uh, the conductor bars are not placed perpendicular to the shorting rings but they are placed at certain angles this process is known as skewing in the next video session we'll be understanding the operation principle of induction motor